Because I know. Uh, so here's the deal. You know, I, I love the patients who come in and say, Doc, I, I'm a night owl. That's just how that's, that's just how who I am. And I would contend that if you took away the electricity and you, I, I do mission work. So sometimes we end up in places that the whole like Haiti, <laughs> there's no electricity after sunset and you get their candles and my gosh, everybody seems to go to bed <laughs> at sundown after the first week. Um, so habits are in our culture of being very busy and you know work hours that are really long and lots of social rewards for a cognitive performance that go on into the night. Uh, but when you look at what is natural for our bodies, there are a few things we cannot reprogram. And one of those is a circadian rhythm. The circadian rhythm, uh, even on a lower level, when I fast for three or four days and I do a strict salt and water only fast, you can still see my sugars go up right before I wake up in the morning and my body will use them and I start producing ketones. Um, that, that rise and fall of glucose is a product of your circadian rhythm. And it doesn't go away, it's there. Uh, you can't like say, but I don't wanna do, I don't want my circadian rhythm to start there this morning, I wanna sleep in. Okay, you can sleep in, but your circadian rhythm is still probably gonna not let you sleep really deeply or do the things that you would, you know, it's gonna, it's gonna follow the pattern of the sun. So when patients say, doc, can I eat later and then eat late at night? I would say, I like you to look at your circadian rhythm and most people that's somewhere around six or seven o'clock in the morning, you know, you can shift it by an hour or so, um, but it doesn't usually shift much more than that. And I need you to subtract from there. And in your case, I took 12 hours because you had been really stuck for several, several months yeah. uh, to say, I want no food in your stomach for those 12 hours, which really means you kind of got to eat at least a half an hour to 45 minutes before that timer starts, because we need it out of the stomach and into the intestines. That's when we really start your fast. What happens during that time is that your hormones do reset. Your insulin will go down when you don't eat for 12 hours prior to the start of your circadian rhythm. The habits that we end up in our culture say, but doc, I'm not really hungry in the morning. And I would contend that if you at three o'clock in the afternoon, and I mean stop, salt and water only, and you did that, just do it for two days and watch what happens when you wake up in the morning is that you do have hunger. Uh, so when people say, I just don't have any hunger first thing in the morning, that's a habit that has evolved. And it doesn't mean you have to eat. I mean, I think you have, you, know, you have coffee first thing in the morning. I have coffee first thing in the morning. And then I try to eat that one meal around lunch-ish time if I'm, if I'm doing that. And it really does uh, satisfy me. And then I usually can make it to the next morning. But I really like my coffee first thing in the morning. Uh, when patients come in and say, can I just shift it? I said, if you do that, you're not gonna lose much weight. You, you will still have so much insulin produced because of the timing that you're choosing to eat. And you know, we have some awesome studies now that show a breast cancer reduction with um, time-restricted eating that when you are on a high fat, uh, low carbohydrate ketogenic um, meal that we are starting to see some of the other like really significant biomarkers that improve and that are correlating to a decrease in breast cancer, a decrease in, um, uh, I want to say the other one was a colon cancer, if I remember right. Don't quote me on that one. The breast cancer, I know for sure. Anyway, the, the time-restricted eating uh, has to do with the decrease in the insulin, and that is where they're getting these benefits from. So when somebody says, can I shift it? I'm like, first of all, I can prove it to you by having you check your glucose in the morning and your ketones in the morning. And I'll tell you that ratio is not gonna be pretty. You do have to stretch it to that 10 to 12 hours. And this is, you know, again, trying to guess how insulin resistant people are will help me uh, uh, guess, how, you know, what, what time do they need with no food in order to get that ratio low enough so that we can spark their metabolism uh, to really improve uh, not just for today and tomorrow, but for a lifetime. Yeah. And just for my story, I had been stalled doing keto exactly the way I was supposed to. That is the only thing that helped me to start losing weight again was to switch it 
to support eating. I, I call it supporting my hormones, eating to support my hormones. They shut down in the evening, early evening, so I can't eat when they're shut down. So that's my simple way of explaining it. That's great. Yeah, it's absolutely. Hold on. There was one question about circadian rhythm, and I can't find it. Please explain the circadian eating again. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to go ahead and explain that, or you want me to? It's up to you. Uh, go for it. I've done a lot of talking, so let's hear it. Let's have you take the airwaves for a while. See what you say. So the, you. the way I've understood it and the way Dr. Boz has explained it to me is that there's circa circadian rhythm, our body, you should eat when the sun is out. And especially for women, our hormones start pretty early in the morning and you need to feed, you need to eat to support your hormone function. So um, I think you said it starts like 5.30 to 6 in the morning is when it's pretty high and it mm -hmm. starts to slow down between 4 and 6 or in the evening. So the last thing you want to do is eat while those hormones are slowing down. Very good. Yes, you're your perfect student, Jennifer. <laughs> Yeah, the circadian rhythm, uh, it, it actually refers to our clock, our internal clock. And it does. What The clock that wakes you up, there's a burst of cortisol, which is one of these fat hormones that mobilizes sugar. The increased glucose floating around in your body wakes your brain up. And whether or not you, I mean, you're going to do a fast. When I reach for 40, you know, a ratio of 40, usually I have to get to 36 or 42 hours before I can get the number down to 40. So it's a, it's a pretty long fast, but I'll tell you, I've been doing it now for, I don't know, seven months. And I'm not, I'm not perfect. Not every week did I get to do it, but it's my goal for 2019 that I do every week I hit a 40. And what you're really doing is you're bursting your growth hormone. You're bursting the hormones in your body that are important for youth and your skin and hair and, you know, that telomere length. I don't know if you're into that, but it's the... Yeah. Yeah, aging stuff yeah. that really you, you got to make growth hormone to do that. And um, if you want a surge of that, it really that autophagy is definitely pulsing the body when you fast that long, especially if you can mark that your ratio is what you're reaching for. You're not just saying, oh, the timer, if I make it to 40 hours, I quit. That's how I started out. But I've really adapted or adopted the I fast until I hit a ratio of 40 or less. And once so I how, hit often, that, how often are you testing? This? Please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to click the notification bell so you don't miss out on any new videos. Stay tuned.